Welcome to IELTS Academy 9. I'm Yusr, and today we will learn 10 essential listening strategies that you must know in order to get band 9. But before we start, let me tell you that you can now join my Telegram channel where you can practice and download many free PDFs, and I leave you the link here in the description box. So now let's get started. The first strategy has to do with your preparation as you cannot start answering tests without a prior practice. And as we say, practice makes perfect. Here I'm going to help you with excellent websites and applications in order to improve your listening and tell you how to use them. And I'm going to leave you the links in the description box as well. The first website is BBC Learning English 6 Minute English. It's a website and you can also download the mobile application to listen to 6 minute podcasts on a daily basis. But why 6 minute English? First, because each podcast is only 6 minutes, so imagine how many topics you can listen to every day just in a few minutes. Another important reason is the British accent that you need to get used to before your test. In addition, the scripts of the podcasts are downloadable and at the end of each podcast, the new and difficult words are reviewed by the speakers, which is great for gaining new words. The second website is VOA or Voice of America Learning English. Why VOA? Because you will be exposed to another accent, which is the American accent. And the topics of the podcasts are divided into three levels, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And it's up to you to choose. I mean, you can start with the beginning level, and if it's so easy, you can upgrade to the intermediate. Practice for some time till you feel comfortable, and then upgrade to the advanced level. And like Six Minute English, all the podcasts have scripts. The third website is ELO or English Listening Lesson Library Online. This website has international speakers. Therefore, you will listen to different accents such as British, American, Australian, Indian and more. And the nationalities of the speakers are shown via flags next to each podcast. There are also three levels to choose from, which are beginner, intermediate and advanced. Unlike 6 Minute English and VOA, ELO has a script for each podcast and the good thing here is that new words and expressions are written in a different color in blue. There are also two icons over each script, one for quiz where you can check your comprehension with MCQ multiple choice questions and the other icon is for vocab where the new words in blue are pronounced and their meanings are explained with examples. Isn't that great? I believe so. And I believe practicing either on a daily or weekly basis will enhance your listening skills a lot. Now let's move to the second strategy, highlight the keywords, which means highlighting the most important words in the question. And this helps you spot the answer very quickly during listening to the track. So I'll show you now how to do this. This is section two. And as you can see, this is a multiple choice question. You have the question and you have long options. You need to go through the options very quickly and spot the keywords. So here we have before Queen Elizabeth I visited the castle in 1576. So the important words here before the action and the visit. The options repairs were carried out to the guest rooms. I choose repairs. A new building was constructed for her, new building. A fire damaged part of the main hall, a fire on the third option. In 1982, the castle was sold too, so I have castle and sold. The first option, the government, it's only one word, and also B, the Finnish family, and C, an entertainment company. In some of the rooms, visitors can, so I choose here rooms and visitors can do what? Speak to experts on the history of the castle, so I choose speak to experts. Interact with actors dressed as famous characters, interact with actors. See models of historical figures moving and talking, so see models. In the castle park, visitors can, so we have the castle park, the place and visitors can see an 800 year old tree, so I choose tree, go to an art exhibition, 
art exhibition, visit a small zoo. Zoo. At the end of the visit, the group will have, so we have the end of the visit and the group will have afternoon tea in the conservatory, so I choose tea, the chance to meet the castle owners, so we have castle owners, and a photograph together on the great staircase, so we have a photograph. And now let's move to the third strategy predict the answers. To predict the answers means to expect the answers and this strategy is very important because it helps you find the answer very quickly and save time. You can predict a person like a group of people or an organization. You can also predict a number like a date or a cost especially if you find the currency symbol so you know that it's a cost and you are going to hear a number. You can also predict time and so on. You can predict a place or you can predict the word form, grammar here, a verb or a noun or an adjective. And let me show you how we do this. This is a card on patient details, personal information, the name Julian Garcia. The first question is contact number, so you know that you are going to write a phone number. Date of birth, and here 1992, so you expect something like, for example, 3rd of May because of the year, so you expect the day and the month. Occupation works as A. A must be followed by a noun, so you know that you are going to write a noun and most probably the name of the job. Insurance company, life insurance, so here you write the name of the life insurance company. Details of the problem, type of problem, pain in her left, left is an adjective, so it will be followed by a noun and it could be part of her body because this is a problem like in her left ear or leg. When it began we have a go so you write a period of time like a week ago or two days ago. Other information sports played belongs to a space club again after a, a noun so it could be a word like health club or the name of the club. Goes space regularly so goes a verb so after the verb here it will be a sport and especially a sport with ing like goes running regularly or goes swimming regularly medical history injured her possessive adjective so it has to be followed by a noun last year no regular medication apart from apart from again another noun so this is how you predict. It's very easy and it helps you find the answer quickly. And now let's move to the fourth strategy. Listen for synonyms. Synonyms are different words with the same meaning and they are very common in the IELTS test. This means you are given words in the question but not necessarily to hear the exact word in the listening audio. You hear a different word with the meaning. For example, here are three words like a study, annual and zero. A word like study, you might have it in the question, but in the audio, you hear a word like researches. The word annual in the question, you might hear a word like per year or yearly. Zero, you can hear O. And let me show you how we do this. This is a card, inquiry about joining youth council. Name, Roger Brown, age 18. The first question here on currently staying in so in the audio you might hear a different word that means staying like for example accommodation or the verb live another example the word occupation student and part-time job as occupation might be heard as work or job or a question like what do you do hobbies you might hear something like what do you like doing or what do you enjoy doing or the word interests and so on so this is the idea of synonyms and as I told you when you practice more you will learn more and more synonyms now let's move to the fifth strategy which is reading the instructions this is highly significant to know especially when it comes to this question it's a sentence completion question and the instructions tells you to write, for example, no more than three words and or a number, 
no more than two words and or a number no more than one word and or a number or write one word only and i have a video on this question i'll leave you the link in the description box to understand all the options you will have from these instructions so imagine that you have the question telling you write no more than two words and or a number here you have to understand the options if it tells you no more than two words so here you have to consider the options you have maximum two words so you can have two words and a number or you can have only two words you can have less you can have one word and a number or you can have only one word and then you can have a number alone so imagine that you hear this word in the track 22 applicants so what do you think the correct option here according to the instruction not more than two words of course this one is correct why because we have a number and a word we can have one number and one word 22 applicants this is also correct because if the number is written in the form of words and hyphenated it's considered as one word so here we have one word and this is the other word two words but this option is wrong because 22 without a hyphen is considered two words this is a word and this is the word and this is the third word these are three words but the question tells you no more than two words that's why you have to understand the question very well the instructions very well and the options so here as you see is a card and the instruction is write one word and or a number this means one word and a number or only one word or only a number these are the three options we have so the first question here contact phone you know that you are going to write only one number it could be like o three three seven two one nine whatever date of birth 1992 so you expect the number and the month so you can write something like second may so this is a number and a word which is correct occupation works as a we said here you expect a noun and it has to be like a job name one word but if we move to six here when it began and we have the word ago so for example a week ago won't be correct because a is a word and week is another word and here it tells you one word so your max number of words is only one word but you can write something like two weeks ago and this is correct because you have a number here and one word so please understand the instructions very well in order to write the correct answer and now let's move to the sixth strategy which is identifying signposting words and phrases signposting words and phrases are different words and phrases that guide you through what's being said they come usually in section four as it's a long talk section four is a monologue and it could be a lecture by a professor or a presentation by a student or a talk by a university staff member and because it's a long monologue you might get lost so identifying signposting will help you keep track signposting words and phrases could be used to introduce the talk like what like today we are going to talk about or the topic of today's lecture is or today i'll be discussing the purpose of today's lecture is the subject or topic of my talk is this morning we are going to take a look at introducing the structure or giving an overview in today's presentation i'll be talking about three points i'm going to divide this talk into three parts in the first part i'll talk about whatever in the second part i'll talk about blah 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 first we will look at then we will go on to and finally i'll introducing a point or a section let's start with to begin with firstly i'll start with the first reason or cause or point or part is finishing a point or a section 
We have looked at. I've now spoken or talked about. To recap. To conclude. Starting a new point. Let's move on to. Moving on. And I'd now like to discuss. The second part of my lecture is about. The next area or topic I'd like to focus on is. Giving examples. For example or for instance. Two examples of this are. A clear example of this is. Summing up or ending the talk. To sum up or to summarize. In summary or in conclusion. Overall. The three main points were. I'd now like to recap. Let's recap briefly what we have looked at. It's clear from what we have discussed that. The seventh strategy is recognizing distractors. And it's very important to learn it because from the name, you know that there is something that distracts you. Distractors are words or phrases that are used in dialogues where a speaker says something and is then corrected, which means that you have to wait. You don't have to rush because distractor is there to confuse you and make you choose the wrong answer. So you have to focus and wait. Distractors come with these words and phrases. Oh no, I'm sorry. But, in fact, or that's, I think there is a mistake. I'm afraid. I think you got it wrong. Now let's see how. This is the question and here is the script that you supposedly listened to. Available for week beginning. So you underline the keywords available and week beginning. Now let's read the script. What date did you have in mind? The week beginning the 14th if possible. I'll just check it. I'm sorry, Tom. It's already booked that week. It's free the week beginning the 28th. Though for seven nights. In fact, that's the only time you could have it in May. So when you listen... You hear the week beginning the 14th, so you simply spot this number and you think this is the correct number. But afterwards, there is a distractor, which is, I'm sorry. And after that, this number is corrected to 28th. So you have to read it carefully. Available for week beginning. So here the answer, I just check. I'm sorry, Tom, it's already booked that week. So on 14th, it's booked. It's free the week beginning the 28th free is a synonym for available so here you choose 28th now let's see another example cost of main hall for saturday night evening so the keywords here we have cost main hall and of course we have saturday night the script well, we're organizing a dinner to raise money for a charity and we're hoping for at least 150 people. So I think we will go for the main hall. How much would that cost? Let's see. You wanted it for the evening of September the 1st. Yes, that's a Saturday. So from 6 p.m. to midnight, that would be 115 pounds. That's the weekend price. It's 75 pounds on weekdays. So here we have two numbers to distract you, 115 and 75. So we have to listen carefully and search for the distractor. And we have that set that clarifies which uh, number to choose. So from 6 p.m. to midnight, that would be 115. That's the weekend price. So this is weekend. And here he's talking about Saturday, which is a weekend. It's 75 on weekdays. In the question, we don't need the weekdays. We talk about the weekend, which is Saturday. So the correct number here is 115 pounds. And that's it for distractors. I believe we just need to learn how to spot the distractor itself, and then it will be easy to pick the correct answer. Now, let's move to the eighth strategy. Names are always spelled. In the listening, we always hear names of people or organizations or streets or places. You don't have to panic because names are always spelled. So here we have the question and the script. The question here, we have cottage and you need to write the name of the cottage. 
Well, we have just finished converting another building into a cottage, which we are calling Cherbill Cottage. Sorry, what was that again? Cherville. C-H-E-R-V for vector I-L. So again, the name was mentioned very quickly. Don't panic. It will be spelled afterwards. So when the spelling begins, you start writing the word here. Another question. Building 10A, Industrial State, Grassford. The script. Okay, that's better for me actually. And what about the location? Where exactly are the workshops held? They are in Building 10A. There is a big sign on the door. You can't miss it. And that's in Fradstone Industrial State. Sorry, Fradstone. That's F-R-A-D-S-T-O-N-E. So when the name is spelled here, you start writing your answers. And that's very simple. Now let's move to the ninth strategy. Make notes on the question sheet. This strategy has to do with the paper-based test because you are given the question sheet where you can write your answers and after that you'll be given 10 minutes to copy your answer on the answer sheet but for the computer based you don't have time to write notes making notes means if you listen to big words and you need to write them very quickly you don't have to write the word in full you can find some way to write it in short so for example a word like university you can write it on the question sheet very quickly as u n i because you don't have time. Bookshop, you can write it like this. Fitness center, you can write, for example, fit and then sent. Public toilet, you can write it as pub and then toy. Just short form in order to save time and then you can write your complete answer in the answer sheet. The tenth and last strategy here is don't review preview it has to do with time and here you have example of section one and two you know that before each section you are given time to read the question so if you are done with section one and you start section two you will be given time for reading the questions in section two this time is for section two. Don't waste it and review your answers in question one. It would be a waste of time. You are done with section one and that's it. Make use of time and go through section two in order to have this preview of the question and answers. Time is very important and it's short and you don't want to waste any single second in the test. And that's all. I hope that you find these strategies helpful they are very important and you should apply them and it will help you to get band 9 and thank you so much for watching my video i hope you enjoyed it and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to watch all my new videos